The Evexot, or white-skinned people, would come up the Kobuk River after rounding a peninsula along the ocean. Although he said this many times, no one really believed him. He told them that the white-skinned travelers would come swiftly over the surface of the water in fire-powered kayaks. They also would travel swiftly through the air by firepower. You too, he told the people, will be able to sit in your boats and move across the water without rowing or pushing it. You too will sit in your boats and move across the sky. He said, people will be sitting in a little boat and not paddling because when people want to go someplace they have paddle or when they have kayak they paddle on account of moving and going someplace they paddle so Maniak said there will be no paddling people will get in a little boat and sit down and they will start moving real fast or real slow or real fast Something will be controlling their boat, some kind of little something that moving behind them will will control their boat. That means engine or even rude to them. Uh, mm -hmm. After he said that, he said, this little boat will be traveling in the air pretty soon after that. And still this something that runs will control this little boat and they will start to travel real quick to other villages. When they want to go, they will just fly. They will get in this boat and will start flying again. And so people were visiting real quick. That means the airplanes then, what he prophesied about the airplanes then. Later, we moved to Shungna village and lived there. The Fergusons came and we had a sawmill at Kuchak. One day we heard a strange noise. We climbed up to the sawmill area where they were working. Whenever they sawed logs, we climbed up to watch because they were close to where we lived. My friends Tommy Kutachak Lee, Urge Chok, and some others were there with me as we climbed up. We didn't climb far when the noise we heard was coming closer. Suddenly, we saw something in the sky. It was approaching fast. It had windows and a windshield. Two people were sitting in this vessel, one behind the other. People started running around in Shungnak. As the airplane circled around, there was much confusion. That was when we saw the first airplane. It was predicted that it would come in from the direction of Kobuk village, which is east. When it landed, the passenger was an Eskimo. They recognized him. He had lived in the upper Kobuk area before that. His name was Nuleyuk. He had moved away quite a while back. What Manilak went over there and and was trying to help our people. He went over there and he made all kind of predictions. And he went over and said, okay, these are the events that's going to happen. These are the things that we're going to do. So that way, when we encountered with these elements of, of the Western society coming in, we were so odd that we would, take, we would be taken advantage of. And in a sense, the stories that goes along with that, let me give you an example of a few of them. When the white man came with his plane, it didn't um, startle the uh, Eskimos upper Kobuk that, were, that lived and uh, listened to Manila when he was in, when he was in upper, uh, upper Shagnak, I mean upper Kobuk. 
but you went down further to where like Norwich and different places that never you know really maybe take his story seriously or even listen to him they thought that was the end of the world and they panicked some were running around outside you know just like went outside and started praying and in fact the story goes to where one man went you know fell on his back trying to watch this plane <laughs> you know every second that the wind fell right on his back because um, you know it, people lost their minds and I think if we went over there and, and, and I personally went over there when I studied Manila you know, I, I sit there and I think in, in contrast in terms of what he was trying to tell us and what we went through and then it can even still apply in this day and age because you know we're always you know just like we're, we're going to be living in the last days and there's obviously they're going to be anti-Christ to where if we're not in tune with our religion and we don't have the power and source that we're, we're aware of is that we don't know what kind of source that's going to be around and if the, any kind of event, a disaster, any, any of these type of things I think that can be our sources and that can be our strength in terms of the things that were expected that were told to us by Manila Manila practiced some customs that seemed strange and contrary to Inupec ways he washed and took baths, something unheard of among his people. He predicted that one day they also would clean themselves. His dad, Kayena, take my dad holding his hand and walk over there where this crazy man, they thought he was crazy, but he was not crazy. And so when they go in, he welcomed them and then they sit down and then he got a bowl of water and a rock but he mentioned this rock will be something else that will cleanse your your hands and your face make them clean that's the way later on some years after they gonna use some kind of a wrong thing to clean your face and your hands and he washed. He washed with the water, with the rock. And then after he washed, he he tell them that's the way they're going to start living later on. They're going to wash all the time. People going to wash. It was Manilik's custom, wherever he made a camp or home, to set up a tall pole. Although his people had no calendar and didn't divide the days into weeks, Manilik taught that the day on which he attached an animal skin flag to the pole was a day to rest and to worship. This happened every seventh day. On that day, he did no work, but spent the day talking of his predictions. Some people accused him of being lazy, but he replied that he was living by the commandments of his grandfather. Since I have been asked to tell a story, I will try to tell about Manilak. Manilak is my real grandpa. I am from the upper Kobuk area, from Kala, which is where Manilak is from. My name is Imaluruk, and my English name is Joe Sun. I will begin by saying that Manilak said many things. Many elders knew him years ago but now they have since died. Manilak lived, did his chores, and rested every seven days. He said, I honor this day, and he raised a pole. 